Welcome to John McGivern's Main Streets, the podcast that takes you behind the scenes of this popular TV program. I love it. <laughs> You'll hear from John, Main Streets producer and director Lois Maurer, and that episode's content producer as they share some of their favorite memories from filming and interesting stories that you won't find anywhere else. Today's episode, Dodgeville, Wisconsin. So we're talking about Dodgeville, Wisconsin, which happened to be our final episode of the season. I'm sitting here with Lois Maurer, who is the executive producer and director, and with Aaron Johnson, who believes he's the executive producer. Do you see it? <laughs> Aaron, it's good to see you. How are you? You as well. I'm we had fine. a good time, didn't we? We did. It was great. So, well, you know, I learned something about you on this episode. Um, you learned several things about me, but I'm nervous about what you're going to bring up. <laughs> you're bossy. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> no, which was fine. You're kind of bossy. Kind of like, well, I guess, I, should I listen to him, Lois? <laughs> <laughs> well, in real life, Aaron's an art director as well. So right. he is used to running the show. He did all the graphics for Main Streets from day one, came up with the logo. So, you know, we got to cut Aaron a lot of slack. Everything you see art-wise are open. Everything that's Aaron's work. And yeah. you're really, you're brilliant. Well, thank you. You are. And you're also a good producer. Mm. Yeah, you make sure everything happens, don't you? Get it done. Did you like Dodgeville? I love Dodgeville. It was great. Did you know Dodgeville? Uh, had been past it in the past, but never stayed there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but mm -hmm. what did you love most about it? You know what was really cool is we had Maisie along, and Maisie are, is our newest Plum employee, and yeah. she's from Dodgeville. She yeah. graduated there, and she was more popular than you, John, in town. <laughs> yeah, more people more. would shout across the street, hey, Maisie! And so she was like a celebrity, and that was cool. Did you think I resented her for that? <laughs> just, just a little bit. <laughs> I thought you were grateful for that. You're like, oh, good, they're talking amazing. Oh, really? It was so nice. And she did a great job, too. She was great, yeah. yeah. And she knew everybody, and everybody knew her. Yeah, she helped me with the content on this one as well. After I picked out everything, she really was able to schedule it all. And she it's great having somebody behind the scenes who can call people who know someone. Mm -hmm. Right. That really was nice. Um, can you name your favorite stop? Bob's Bitch and Barbecue. Can I tell you? <laughs> okay. And we yeah. went back. You did? Yeah, because the first time we were there, the crew just watched John eat a ton right. of meat. We were like, look at him. He's just put down three pounds of beef. <laughs> they were just a few tips. Sure. They were eight <laughs> tips because yeah, there's... But each of those tips was the half of the size of a deck of cards. <laughs> I didn't even notice. There's a lot of meat. <laughs> it was good. And we watched you eat and we literally were like, oh my gosh. And then we had to move on, right? It's like, right. okay, got to go. And then we were like, we're going back for John dinner. had the burnt ends during the shoot in the afternoon. Right. The whole crew went back that night for dinner and we all ordered burnt, burnt ends. <laughs> yep. Weren't they delicious? They were awesome. Yeah. I, you know. And ate uh, sauces. <laughs> <laughs> it was good, but that, that was a great place. And wasn't he great? Oh, Bitch yeah. He was Bob. fantastic. Yeah. Is he it Bitchin' so... Bob or Bob Bitchin'? Because <laughs> <I'm not laughs> sure. I think either one would have worked. <laughs> yeah. have, he was very kind of droll and dry and had... He but was funny. Great, oh, and sweet. Very yes. funny. Yeah. yeah, very funny. And has lived yeah. through it all and is still going into work every day. Yeah. 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 And very honest about the whole business aspect of it. Yeah. Like he's not a chef. Right. right. He's a manager. And he knows that his restaurant is pretty much the game in town, right? He he knows that Bob's is the place that everybody goes, not only locals, but, you know, visitors. And there's a reason. It was really good. Yeah. So I started to play with barbecue sauce and gave it as a, as a gift, and it just kind of grew from there. Can we have a little discussion on barbecue? We're Dodgeville style. I do things that I like, and, you know, we, we do everything with a dry rub. Sure unless, dry. Unless you ask for it to be wet. And this way people get to try all the sauces. Right. Can we talk about the menu a little bit? Sure. We can't change much anymore. You can't. Because when you take an item off the menu, the they get mad. That was great stop. We um, One of my favorite stops was standing on a ball field with a guy named Gene Van Dyke. Oh, yeah. Who the ball field was named after. And He's like the longest running coach in Dodgeville, and he coaches girls softball. Girls softball. So we were standing on the field talking, and Lois was standing behind the camera. Just, I could see her being like, what are you doing? <laughs> because we had the best discussion around the Milwaukee Brewers, around baseball, around the spirit. of Everything uh -huh. baseball. Everything yeah, baseball. Everything I it can't was, use in the show. 
It was great. <laughs> I loved it. Can I get my own tape of that, please? You can. <laughs> you can. But what a good, what, you know, what a testament and a and a real kind of tribute to this man who they named this ballpark at this park after. And it's so well loved too. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a couple of people in this episode like that. The Riley brothers are also. You can't talk about Dodgeville unless you talk about the Riley brothers. Right. And we did talk to the Riley brothers, yeah. both of them. Yeah. The Again, one, on a ball field. <laughs> which that ball field was named after them as well. Right, right. It's a nice field. We got a little grandstand with yeah. bleachers in there. And, and the whole great... community just loves it. I mean, they oh, yeah. rally around it. It really becomes a gathering point. And, and that guy, the one of the brothers, has been coaching at the high school for, I don't know, 39 years? Is that it? Right. And Mike Riley is the newspaper man. Dodgeville Chronicle. And it's his published family is... Yeah, Fanny's forever, right? Newspaper. And they're still, they come out once a week. Yeah. On Thursdays, I believe. Was yeah, that? He, Do you think we writes. made the paper? What? Do you think we made the paper? <laughs> I that hope so. That would be so, so sad. God, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? Want to wear something that's going to support your favorite show? Shop at Main Street Store. Proceeds go to help us get next season into production. So come on, go shopping at MainStreets.tv. You know, I've got to talk about insurance. Are you stressed and overwhelmed with your Medicare Advantage plan options? It's ironic, really. The thing you need the most causes you stress. And it doesn't have to be that way. I chose Network Health because it's not stressful. For 40 years, they've provided health insurance to Medicare members throughout Wisconsin. And their customer service, oh, let me tell you something, it's like nothing I've ever experienced before. So if you're looking for a Medicare Advantage plan and you want to be relieved of stress, you got to call my friends at Network Health. Call 844-277-7174 today. That's 844-277-7174. Don't wait. Lois, what'd you love? Well, I, I loved Land's End. Okay, mm. largest employer in Dodgeville, have seen their brand my entire life. And it's something special about being able to go to where they actually put it all together. You know, yeah. the corporate offices were beautiful, and they let us into the distribution warehouse, which, can I tell you, was no easy feat. They don't let people back in there. So as a producer, that was a coup. <laughs> and that was amazing to see. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. That was very cool. It's a massive campus. Oh, this is giant building after giant building. Right. In the middle of Dodgeville, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. which you think to yourself, okay, does that really, like, that's not the first thing you would think. You see a major manufacturer clothing brand and you think, what, East Coast, West Coast? And correct me if I'm Dodgeville. wrong, but population of Dodgeville is around 3,000. And aren't there 2,500 employees at <laughs> yes. Land's End? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't all live in Dodgeville. <laughs> <laughs> they come from other places, too. And they allowed us into the embroidery center where yes. um, I, I operated the embroidery machine, which, um, what to that be involve? honest, uh, I pushed the button. <laughs> 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 and it exactly. happened. Exactly. And how they, you know, how they, they set up those, the, the bags there. Of course, everybody knows that bag that I'm talking about. It's that satchel that has Land's right. End on. But when they took us into their, um, the heritage room, didn't you see all of like the polos? Didn't that just bring you right back to like many, many years ago when it was mm -hmm. so exciting to get a polo like that with the white collar and the stripes and all Big that bold nautical. colors. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And oh. they told us that's all right back on the rise. It's like everything goes around and comes around, doesn't it? And that was our final segment of our final episode of on the, the season, final day. Of the final day. So you know what John was like. Get this mic off me and let me get in the car and go home. <laughs> I was, I was, no, but Land's End was a way, was a good way to end it. Sure could, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I loved Land's End. And of course, the other thing I was most excited about was, um, for me personally, Governor Dodge State Park. Mm. It's so pretty. And we were there just at the right time of year, you know, early October. Little, yeah. Like we, if we'd have been two weeks later, we'd have had more color right. probably, but you know, it wasn't camper on top of camper because right. we were there in, you know, September. Well, so and we weren't nice. where there could be campers. They took us up to where you have to have a tent. 
and <laughs> there we were, October. It was cold as could be, and there's people with their tent set up, but if, as you noticed, they were sleeping in their car, <laughs> which made, I, you know, as I said to the, we, we talked to the manager and to the the, the park, park rangers. Park yes. rangers. Yeah. And the manager, yes. We, we talked to them, and as I told them, I just, I don't get it. Beautiful park, though. Mm -hmm. But why would somebody want to be in a tent? It's 38 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> it truly is one of the most popular state parks in Wisconsin, though. And if you have kids, um, you may have been there for that reason. Because if you want to experience the outdoors with your kids, Governor Dodge, depending, like we live in Milwaukee, and we would take our kids there because it's an hour. Yeah. If the rain comes, you know what, pack up and go home, you know, kind of thing. But the sites are very private and there's a lot to do. There. Great lakes, lakes great beaches. Fishing. Yeah. And good picture taken there, Aaron. Yeah, it was beautiful. Oh, my yeah. Lord. It was like my graduation picture. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Got some portraits. It was, a, it was a different kind of senior portrait. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't let that go. <laughs> uh, uh, the square ice cream. <laughs> which I'm telling you, I found by mistake. When I did the site survey, I went into, um, the, it's right on the corner and it's called Catherine's Market. And I really was just by myself and I thought I'm going to stop for lunch. And I saw somebody in there get a scoop of ice cream that was square. And I was like, okay, what is this about? So I just went and talked to the people about it. And I realized that in Dodgeville, the more people you talk to, it's a thing there. The square scoop has been there for many, many years. And it's not a flat <laughs> square rectangle is what I thought. So I thought it would be... I th like a slab of ice a cream? A slab is what I thought. Oh. But it's not. It's a... Like a it, half stick of butter. That's what it looks like. Very yeah. good. That's mm. perfect. Now people can see it mm. if they have it. Right. It's mm. like a half a stick of butter. Yeah. <laughs> and for the sake of good television, I ate a triple scoop ice cream Yeah, cone. you took one for the team there, huh? <laughs> and I just, I just pounded it. And then I had brain, brain freeze. <laughs> yeah. So when if you, you watch the Dodgeville episode, boy, I hope it makes that episode. And you see the man inhale the triple scoop. That's Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> but you also had some other good sweet treats at Steph's mm -hmm. Sweet Treats, which oh. I'll tell you, I thought her business model was really good. You know, this is a woman who started this bakery, if you will, but during the pandemic realized people aren't going to come to my bakery, so I'm going to send my stuff to them, not cooked, not baked. Um, she puts the boxes together, and you come pick up your box, and you make it at home. It's With a kit. all the ingredients. It's a yeah. kit. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. All the ingredients and the directions. You go home and you make it. And you were able to make that with her. I put together the box. Right. I didn't make the actual cookie or whatever we were making, muffin that Yeah, day. right, right. But put the box together. But somehow the muffins were still there. And somehow she, made through them. the magic of the television, had the muffins <laughs> ready. It was finished. <laughs> right. And it they were like, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't need a fancy equipment, just a bowl and a spoon in an oven. Apple cider donut muffins. All of this comes in the box. I do all kinds of things. So we've done s'mores bars, apple cider donuts, cookies, yeah. a variety of things. And it's a monthly thing? It's called a subscription, but you don't have to get it every month if you don't want to. I just have like an email list subscription. And do they stop in and pick up the yep, box? Yep, they stop in, they get the box with all of your thing inside, and then they just take it home. Yeah, what else do we do there? Uh, White Oak Savannah, that's... Uh... That is a good place. That is a great place. Paul Gaynor is the owner, and he bought a house on that property. Remember? He, he bought a house on the back 40 right. of the property. Right. And always had been kind of watching that farm to see what would happen and it, if it would go up for sale. Yeah. And it did, and he bought it. And he had the venue idea right out of the gate. But he's also really into conservation, and he turned it into prairie um, from the fields that had been. He's got a couple of... Um, houses on the property that you can rent. I mean, as like being Airbnbs, mostly for the venue, right? Mostly he, for the wedding. He has a small traffic. solar farm on the property there. Yeah, yep. he's very environmentally conscious. And um, the barn is used for not only like weddings and stuff, but they do some farm to table dinners in there. And he's yeah, got but, a great but there was a connection to Frank Lloyd Wright. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was a connection to the Frank Lloyd Wright family. Yeah, it was, it was it like was, his brother. Somebody owned it that he was related to, but it wasn't his. Right. So it's not Frank Lloyd Wright architecturally. No, but Frank Lloyd no. Wright maybe slept there. <laughs> hmm. There you have it. And you picked it because this was where we had our tour group. So right. we, we, we had our bus tour yep. uh, this season, and uh, they came to Dodgeville with us. Met us at White Oak Savannah. 
uh, for dinner. Yeah. Which I love the fact that this was sponsored by my dear friends at Network Health. So we, we right. had dinner. I did my own show. They had because their... Because that's kind of the perk for the bus trip. So the John McGivern's Main Street's bus tour. Yeah. This was new to us, obviously, because it was our first season doing it. But people got on the bus in, like, Elm Grove, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then they went to places we went during season one, right? So right. that they could see. They had seen the episodes. And then we get to meet up with them. And the whole get is that they get to watch us work. They also get to have dinner with John and then a private show by John. Right. And so, you know, none of it's scripted. It's, this is true. <laughs> 15 minutes before he's going to go on stage, he's like, what am I going to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> But it was a great evening, great show. Yes. Great dinner. Yeah. Great and venue. A, yeah, right? beautiful right. barn that they completely rebuilt. Yeah. 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 And then we got to meet meet up with the people the following morning at my favorite the place, the infamous House on the Rock. Amen. House on the Rock, which can I tell you was perfect for the bus tour because you have to have a venue big enough that forty four people can watch you work or follow you around, but still. Not so, not that they get in your way, right? Mm -hmm. And the beauty of it is, at a place like House on the Rock, I could tell the people in the bus tour what I wanted them to do, uh, and they listened. Versus walking into some place with just the general public, you know, you can't, you know, and you always feel so weird in the general public if you think you're inconveniencing people. Yeah. Well, the bus tour was there to see you do what you do. So, isn't that more comfortable? And I love the fact that you could tell them what to do because I knew that you loved that. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, okay, you stand over here and you two shut up. <laughs> I loved it. You were like, oh my God, she just told people to shut up. I love that. <laughs> Those people saw House on the Rock like no one's ever seen House on the Rock. Running. Before. Running at like yeah. 65 miles an hour trying to follow John and the tour guide. And... That tour, even though it was really fast, they heard things because John was asking questions that you don't get on the normal mm, tour, right? right? Mm. So I think that's what's great about this episode, too, and about this segment in this episode is yeah. all the behind-the-scenes stuff, you know? White Oak Savannah and Land's End and House on the Rock and Back in the Kitchen and stuff. So this one was a lot of really insider information. It was good. And our um, I love that our bus tour... Um, not only um, got to experience House on the Rock, they got to experience that White Oak Savannah, and they learned more about network health. I love that. Wait, one last thing about Dodgeville yeah. that we really loved, or that I really loved, was Emmy was back with her baby. Oh, yeah, that's it was right. so great. We strapped John that had baby. the baby strapped on. I loved it. You I did? That baby did nothing but um, puke and poop. <laughs> <laughs> it puked on me and pooped while I had him. It's in. a he, not an if. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is John's experience with babies, okay? No, he was, I, I did okay. I no, kept, you did okay? He was sleepy? Yeah. 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 Clarence. 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 Yeah. Baby. He was. Yeah. He, he slept for most of all the stand-ups that we did. Yeah. So he was great. He was great. We always say never work with kids and animals. Right. Okay, Clarence well, was pretty I good. worked with Clarence when he first got home with Emmy and we shot at her house with him. Yeah. Yeah, not so much. Okay? Not so much. <laughs> at home, he's a little more comfortable. I can tell you, he let her know. <laughs> well, we love Dodgeville. It was our last episode. And um, um, now we just um, plan for season three, John McGimmer's Main Streets. Curious to find out where John is traveling next? Head over to our website, MainStreets.tv, to learn more. Again, that's MainStreets.tv. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and please leave us a review. It helps more people discover great programming like Main Streets. Look for us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to follow all the action. John McGivern's Main Streets is produced by Plum Media in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs>